Well, good evening. Our guest tonight is very, very special to our program. It is Miss Sonia Isaacs. Sonia, it is wonderful to have you here with us. Well, thanks for asking me. I'm honored to be here. So how long have you been in the gospel music industry? Well, I guess you could say we cut our teeth on it and uh, probably cut our dentures on it one day, too. Uh, <laughs> you know, Mom and Dad started the Isaacs, which back then they were called, we were called different names, um, when we were just babies. And we this year, actually 2021, the Isaacs are celebrating 50 years since Mom and Dad started our group, 50 really? years of singing. So I'm 46, and so they kind of started it all, and we just grew up on the road, so all my life. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. 50 years. 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. I go back to, let's see, it was October of 1992. That was the first time that I ever booked the Isaacs, which it was my first year of promoting events. It was the second concert that I ever promoted. And I remember that night um, how powerful you were. And I don't know how old you were then in 1992, and I won't ask you that. <laughs> I already told you my age. That's, just, that's better. Um, I was 18, 17 18. or 18. Mm -hmm. And I remember, 18. I remember standing at the side of the stage not knowing what I was doing mm -hmm. because all I knew is I felt like this was something God wanted me to do. But I was standing there, and I watched you as you were there playing and singing, and it was like you were the sunshine on that stage. Wow, thank you. Uh, you know, you're, you, you had that face that you were there and you were just radiant, a light of hope, you know, for those folks that were there, sort of mesmerized by your music. Thank you. That was a, 92 was a hard year for the Isaacs, but it was a good year. It was, um, we had our first number one song, From the Depths of My Heart, which was out about that time. And um, it actually was 93, so we had just kind of written and were probably already staging some of those songs. And so it was the first time that really we had started traveling outside of the tri-state area and the doors were just opening and, you know, we were finishing up high school. And um, so it was a it was a very, it was a green time for us as well. You were new, we were new. And, um, you know, it, it was it, reflecting back on those times that we've come a long way. We both have. And so, <laughs> but uh, that's cool that you remember yeah. that night. <laughs> yeah, we were at Reynolds Auditorium in Winston-Salem. Yeah. And wow. sold out crowd. Uh, you guys were there. The Perrys were there. I don't remember who else, but I do remember th those two artists because you, wow. for some reason that night y'all really did shine. Joe was still with you at that at that point. And how many instruments do you play? Well, really, mandolin is my favorite and the one that I would prefer only to play publicly. But I can play guitar a little, piano a little bit, bass a little bit, um, just enough to fumble through a song. You know, but <laughs> I wouldn't play any of those in front of anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that through the years you've had just tremendous number of hit songs. Uh, just a few years ago, I remember you came out with a project, um, is it called 432? It's Nature Symphony in Nature. 432. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, that project is my favorite Isaacs album that we've ever done. But it was inspired through a lot of hardships in the Isaacs' personal lives. And it seemed like each one of us were facing a different type of personal crisis. And then collectively, of course, it was pressure on the whole family. But... Um, but it was that album, the songs that we wrote, we wrote all the songs just about, and they were all inspired by pain that we'd, we'd gone through yeah. and, and really seeking the Lord for, um, for help. And yeah. so it, it turned out to be a, a healing album, really. And then the 432 part is that 432 is a tuning frequency, and anybody that plays an instrument would know that when you tune it up, your tuner automatically goes to 440, tuning uh, pitch, but before um, electricity, um, before um, men could tune, you know, all together, they would tune to the sounds of nature, and 432 is nature's frequency. The yeah. birds sing, the whales bellow, um, the sounds of the earth are all in 432 frequency. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. It's like the natural hum mm -hmm. of the earth yes. is at that frequency. Yes, it is. That's amazing. And um, and so we actually have proof of that because uh, we wrote a song opening the album called Nature's Symphony. 
And really, the, we were drawn to that frequency when we had heard a, a sermon about the sounds of heaven and nature and uh, the earth's tone and all the healing frequencies. You know, our body, um, our cells have little bitty vibrators in them. God created everything with the spoken word, right? So he spoke everything into existence. So everything resounds his voice. And our bodies and our cells, they respond to the sounds of heaven, to the sounds of God's creation. And so we, we were really excited when we found this, and we were just pulled to it. We, were just, we felt compelled to do this record, and Becky and I really were the ones that dove into this theory and this idea. And um, so the opening song is called Nature's Frequency, and it talks about the birds singing and, um, you know, that, that, that the bird, when the birds sing, a lot of people don't even know this, but their voices cause the vegetation to awaken in the morning and, like, cause the pores of plants to open so that they can receive the dew of the morning. And it's really interesting. There's a lot of studies done on that frequency that the birds sing in. And so we said, well, this we've got to record some birds, or we got to put some birds on the opening of the song. And so we found a track on YouTube that someone had just recorded some birds singing. It was beautiful. We put it on the record. And right before we go in a mix, uh, the album, we said, oh, man, we better Shazam this bird song just to make sure it's not copywritten. We don't want to steal it or, you know, break any rules. And sure enough, it came back that it was copywritten. And so we said, okay, well, uh, we got to get permission. So I, I went on YouTube and tried to find the owner of it, you know, and, and emailed them or, or messaged them. And in the process, we said, well, let's try to find, let's try to record our own bird sounds so that we can use it in case we don't get permission. And uh, one day, Becky was out in her yard and she recorded some birds. She said there were hundreds of birds in her yard which she'd never seen. And so she went outside to record them. And when she came back in to listen to the voice memos, she had done like five or six takes. She said, on one of the voice memos, she heard this tone, and she said, I don't know what that is, but that's, we've heard a lot about the Earth's tone and all this stuff. Gordon Mote, who's a, a blind pianist, who most people know Gordon because he's an amazing singer and talent, um, he has perfect pitch, and he has told us um, concerning 432, he said, sometimes when I'm out in nature and I'm sitting there, he said, I, I can hear this tone in the Earth, and he said, he has perfect pitch, so it really messes with him because... It's not in 440, it's in 432. And it wasn't until World War II, Hitler and the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds all uh, agreed to change the International Standard Concert Tuning to 440, because before that it was in 432. I know this is a long story, but it's pretty good. That was good, it's very um, interesting. So, yeah, so... Um, I, I really like to get back to about the birds uh, singing in the morning and having the plants knowing how to wake up. And yes. I've never, ever heard okay, that in my well, life. Okay, well, it's, uh, it's called... Um, oh goodness, I'll have to think of what it's called, but it's uh, it's really fascinating. Oh, the sonic bloom. Sonic, sonic bloom. Sonic bloom. Yeah. And you're not just making this up. I'm not right? making this up. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that to myself or you. Uh, but it's called the sonic bloom, and just you can look it up because um, we did a lot of research on this, so we were fascinated by it. So uh, so we so she captured all these birds, and she she heard this tone in the in the background, and she said there were no planes flying over, there was no nothing that would have created the sound that she heard, and so so she sent it to Gordon Moat. She texted it to him, and he was shopping it at Sam's or somewhere, and he heard it, and he's like, "Nice birds, right?" Because that was why we were re recording it. And so uh, Becky said, "Do you hear that tone?" And he said. Yeah, you mean you can hear it? Because no one else could hear what he hears, right? Because he's so sensitive to sounds. And he said, that's the tone that I hear when I'm sitting out in the quiet. He said, that's the earth's tone that I'm hearing. And so we actually took a tuner to it, and it was a perfect 432 hertz chord, and it was in the C note, so I don't know what that translates to. 432 would be the A chord. But, uh, and so when we, it was like something like that and so we had opened that that track with a symphony and so we took that we flew that in and it sounds like part of the symphony it is amazing it is it, it just you wouldn't even know it wasn't part of the symphony at the opening of the song right when you hear the piano on nature symphony you'll hear or whatever the pitch is and then it goes into the track the piano starts um so anyone can hear it but anyway then we ended up getting permission from the guy to use the bird sound so we used all of it and it was just a fascinating thing and so it was like if you build it he will come and you know so we we did the record and but there are a lot of um a lot of 432 um uh, tones that are very soothing and calming and things like that so is so it true it. that if you listen to music at 432 that it creates healing in your body this is what we've heard. In fact, we have a dear friend who um, who told us that he had he, he was he has had uh, sinus problems for years. Like a, what is it called? Your 
septum or something up there. What is it? Um, and deviated he said septum. he could not. Yeah, he deviated septum and he couldn't breathe out of one side of his nose for years. And we were at a, a prayer conference and he was singing there and he said he he was on his way home. It was like a three hour drive. And he said, so I put your Nature Symphony album on in my headphones. And he said, and I listened, I fell asleep. And he said, so the album actually played through like two or three times. And he said, I woke up. And he said, I could breathe through my nose again. And he said, in my foot, he had injured his foot that week. And he said, my foot was perfectly healed. Now, I don't know if that was something God just did for him or if that was because he listened to our album so, you know, um, solemnly. And so, I, But I believe that, like I said, I believe that, that frequency, that nature, uh, God created everything we need in nature. And I do believe that our cells um, are, can be healed by the frequencies that God created. Why not? Uh, you can do anything. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Yeah. So, superstar football player uh, Terry Bradshaw. Oh. He was the executive producer on that project, yes, right? Yes, he was. Uh-huh. And how, how did you get that worked out? Well, we had met Terry Bradshaw um, back about, golly, six or seven years ago at a CMA Awards that my husband was winning an award at. And I introduced myself to him, and he, he kind of freaked out a little bit. And he's like, oh, I'm a big fan of the Isaac. And I'm like, yeah, sure you are. He's like, no, I'm serious. And there were other people that we know standing around him, so I thought they were just kind of messing with me because Terry's kind of a cut-up, you know. Right. And uh, he's like, no, no. He's like, I, I watch the Gaithers. And he said, and your brother plays the big bass and wears those cool hats. And I'm like, maybe he really is a fan. And, and, well, then, he, so. and then he starts singing, I have a father who can to me. I'm like, he really is a fan. So he gave me his number, and we started keeping in touch. And... You know, uh, so executive producer means you pretty much pay for the record. And well, so that's what yeah. I was going to ask. That, that was yeah. a great deal. Yeah, it was. And Terry, he, he, he sings and he's very talented, uh, but that, that wasn't his contrib- contribution to this album. He didn't do anything in the actual producing side, but he did. He, uh, we had, this was the first album we'd done on House of Isaacs Records, a label that we started on our own. And after we had made the album, which the Lord provided every dollar, it was expensive getting a symphony to play on it. I was going to ask, what would something like that cost? Oh, gosh. Everything that Um, you you put in so much into a project like that. That album, I would say, uh, like we can do a record for around maybe 20 or 25,000, but that one was way higher. I mean, just because we had the symphony for the first time on half the record and we just took a lot of time with it. And it also had a lot of songs, extra songs on it. Um, but Terry came on board afterwards and he said, I want to pay for this record. And, you know, that was such a blessing to us. So it allowed us to be able to order our first batch, actually come out in the black, starting from the get-go. And, you know, he's been a blessing to our family in a lot of different ways. But it was just more proof of, of, um, of God's involvement in that record and how he wanted us to make it. And, you know, as I said, the songs, they were all born out of hardships that we'd gone through that year. <clears throat> ben um, had a family member who was going through um, terrible alcohol addiction problems, had just gone through rehab. So Ben was grieving so badly that year. Um, Becky had, you know, she'd been facing for years uh, Crohn's disease and different sicknesses. And she had, you know, she, the Lord has healed her, but she ha- ha- has a lot of anxiety um, left over from the medication that she was on and things like that. But her body is physically well now. But the mental side of the issues that she had, I mean, can you imagine having an issue with Crohn's disease, being a performer when you go on stage and you don't know when it's going to hit you? Right. And like um, it, just those kinds of things and all the pain that she went through. And it was a really hard time for her as well. And she was just dealing with some anxiety stuff. My grandmother had just passed away. My mom's 95-year-old Holocaust surviving mother had passed away. And two weeks after Grandma passed away, I gave birth to a stillborn baby girl when I was six months pregnant. And so all, all of that happened within six months. And, you know, we're, the Isaacs are very transparent. Everyone knows that. If you, if you hear a song by us, we probably wrote it because we were going through that at the time. From the Depths of My Heart was our first number one song. And it's about the time you said was our first concert you booked us at. And that was a, a very hard time for us. And so I, I'm, you know, looking back, I'm so thankful that God allowed us to, um, to, to go through things because he's used them years beyond what, you know, what we could have imagined. And, you know, it's hard for us to see the good sometimes and the pain and the things that he allows us to go through. But, but we have to trust him. And he will take what Satan intends for evil and work it for good. That's true. And we can find peace in that. 
Now, I remember um, after you had that album release party, I had that CD. That was back whenever you still had CD players in your car. <laughs> wow, remember those old days? <laughs> <laughs> and I was driving home, and me and my wife, we were listening to that CD, and we listened to it just over and over and over. And I had recently just came through cancer, mm -hmm. and I had studied I had studied about the 432, about the healing and stuff like that, and I was I was listening to that, and you know I wondered in my mind, you know, what all was going on listening to that, but it was obvious there was a special, there was just a special anointing of God on a lot of those songs, and I, you had told me about the baby, Ava, so <clears throat> that has to be terrible. I mean. I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine that. And then to come home, didn't you already have the nursery and everything already ready? How do you, how do you cope with that? You know, um, this is an interesting full circle thing because when Jimmy and I met, um, we, you know, when you fall in love with somebody and you get married, you talk about babies and names and, you know, the, you want to have, be on the same page with all that stuff. And, and I, I ha always in my heart had the name Ava. Yeah. And I asked him, I was like, how do you like the name Ava? And he said, what's crazy is that we almost named my, he has a, a daughter from a previous marriage. He said, we almost named her Ava. And I said, he said, I love it. And I said, so that's going to be our daughter's name when we have a daughter one day, right? And he's like, I'm in. So, well, we better pick a boy's name in case we have a boy first. So let's pick Aiden because it sounds good with Ava, right? So we had Aiden first, and he was three and a half when we got pregnant with Ava. And, uh, you know, in my heart, I had always wanted a daughter ever since I was a teenager. And I, I can attribute that to, I think, just a, the special relationship that we have with our mom and what a great mother she is. And... Uh, and so I always wanted a daughter, and, and I don't know if you recall, um, when I found out I was having a girl, um, I made this big Facebook live announcement, the gender reveal, and I had this little strawberry dress that I bought at Dollywood. It was a little, like, fluffy um, little strawberry dress with plaid. It just looked so old-timey with the little bonnet and the little bloomers. And I just, I'd had that thing for, like, 20 years. I just kept it, and... You know, and even after I was divorced, my after Tim and I divorced, I kept the dress, and it just stayed with me. And and so when we did the gender reveal, I held up the little dress on camera and I said, "It's a girl." And then I told the story about the dress, and of course I got teary-eyed because like here's this promise I've been holding to my whole life, and now I'm gonna have a girl. So I was just like, I was over the moon, so excited. And of course her name was Ava, which means little bird. Oh, really. Yeah. Little bird. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. And so, um, so anyway, you know, uh, I was, I was excited. I was prepared. I, I don't know. Uh, I still don't know what happened. I don't know. I think there was an issue with, um, the placenta or something that she wasn't getting the nutrients that she needed. And, um, and I, when I was six months along, we were singing in Hawassi, Georgia. And, uh, I started hemorrhaging, and it was an afternoon, like early afternoon concert, and I said, well, we're going home. I'd rather just go home and go to my doctor. So we went on home, and um, it was about a three-hour, three- or four-hour bus ride, and that night I went to the emergency room. And when I got to the emergency room, um, the lady that was doing the ultrasound, she, uh, she was very stern. She was typing. She, was, she wouldn't look at me. And I knew something was wrong. Mom was there. Jimmy was there, my husband. And um, it took about two hours for the doctor to get there because it was, it was like one or two in the morning at that point. And it wasn't even my doctor. He was gone. And she sat down at the edge of the bed, and she said, Mr. and Mrs. Yeri, I'm so sorry to tell you that, you're, that your baby girl has passed away. And Ray... The only thing I could say in that moment was, why, God? First I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, I'm very sure. She said, it looks like your baby's been passed away for a few weeks. I said, how is this possible? Because 
I, I, she was just at that size where I would start to feel her. And I, I thought I was feeling her, but I wasn't, or I don't know what it was. So I just started saying, why, God, why? At the top of my lungs, I'm sure the whole hospital heard me. Why, God? Why did you give me this promise to take it away? And I felt like the shooting of my woman, you know, when she lost her son and he died in the field. And So she said, well, she said, it's, you're going to need to deliver the baby soon because obviously my body was very slow at processing what had happened and rejecting it and all that. She said, you can either go home and wait for that to happen or you can stay here and we can induce the labor and you can just go ahead and deliver her. So we prayed about it and talked about it for a little bit once we pulled ourselves together. Sorry. And uh, I said, let's just stay, you know, and, and I began the process of labor that night and uh, she was born the next day. I went through actual labor, back labor, physical labor, and uh, we got to spend time with her before the funeral home took her. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do. What do you do when you've lost a baby at six months pregnant? Who do you call? What, what do you do with it? I don't want you to take the baby and put it in a trash can. What, what do we do with my daughter, you know? And, um, but they, they told me that a funeral home there locally was, um, would, would donate their time Mm. And they, they came and took her and, and uh, took great care of her. And, and they treated her like a person wow. because she was a person. Yeah. You know, she, she was a child of God already in my womb. God knew her name. And, uh, and so we got to have a beautiful service for her. And, and the funeral home took care of everything. I just paid for the marker. And that was such a blessing to me. And there were people that had made little outfits for babies for that situation. And one lady had crocheted, an old lady, it was her ministry, and she crocheted a little hat with a little dress and, and um, donated it to people that lost babies. And, you know, so it took some of the sting out of it. But, but through that, um, I wrote a week later, I had a writing appointment, and I... Uh, I was able to write the song, Keep Breathing, with yeah. a couple of my girlfriends. I said, do I cancel this? I don't really want to do it. I don't feel like writing, but I need to move on. I need to keep going. And so we wrote that song. And then it was about mm, maybe three, a couple of two or three more months later that we, Becky and I were writing with Kenna West, and we wrote the song, I Love You More, yeah. which is about my experience being on the other side and coming through the healing, you know. Uh, and that's just about trusting God and loving Him more because He brought you through it. You know, a lot of people get angry at God and they blame God when when they hurt or when something happens that they don't understand. But I never blame God. I always trusted God. And uh, you know, it's interesting when uh, since we're talking about the birds so much. Um, oh, I have a lot of stories, but I, know I can't talk forever. <laughs> this is <but> so good. <laughs> it is so good. Thank you. Um, so when I came home from the hospital that evening after delivering her. Um, it was like 9 o'clock when I got home, 9 at night. And so I was completely exhausted from the child labor and the, the birthing and all that. So I went straight to bed. And the next morning I woke up. It was about 4 or 5 in the morning. And I woke up, and it was storming so bad. And it was just nasty out and raining. And so I got up, and I went in my living room. And I just sat down, and I just wept, you know, because here I, I don't have a baby in my womb. I don't have a baby in my arms. Like, it was... It was too much to bear almost. Yeah. And, um, and here's my three-and-a-half-year-old boy who's wondering where the baby is, you know. What do you tell a, ba- a three-year-old that doesn't right. understand that, that this baby they've been excited about is not coming now? But Aiden was so sweet, and he, he was just a blessing. But So it was storming. It was still dark outside. This is in October. Um, and I, I just started, like, writing a letter to my, my daughter. And I just wrote all the things that were in my heart to say to her, like, what would you have looked like? Would you have sang? How would your brother have treated you? Um, just all the things that I would never know. And I just, you know, at the end of it, I said, Ava, your name means little bird, and I know you had to fly home to Jesus. But I hope that, you know, I, and I was just talking out loud, and I hope that you'll visit us. I hope you'll watch over your brother. And, you know, and, and I just finished up the letter with, I love you, Mommy, and... And as I went back and read that letter that I had written to her, when I got to the part that says, your name means little bird, 
this little bird started singing right outside my window. It was right outside my window. And it was, I can't whistle. And it was, it was a song and it was storming. Wow. And it brought me so much comfort because, and I know she didn't reincarnate into a bird, but, but you know, I was like, Lord, what does this mean? And the Lord reminded me that, um, uh, when John baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended as a dove, yeah. a comforter. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord sent me a comforter. And, it, and the birds have been a comfort to me. And so when the Nature Symphony album was recorded, we, that's why we did the bird cages on the cover. And a lot of the songs are about birds. And so it all I'm, just came full, full circle. I'm and a- my grandmother's name, Faye, that passed away two weeks before Ava, her name means beautiful bird. So it was all just... That is amazing. Uh, well, you know what? I, I've looked at the cover of that album a lot of times, and I looked at those bird cages, and I never put that together. I always thought uh, that is the weirdest cover on an album <laughs> <laughs> that I had ever seen. And, you know, you were all looking uh, differently than you normally would for a normal yeah. album cover. Yeah. And so now that all makes sense. Yeah. Why? Well, you know, I am so sorry you. that you had to go through all of that. Um, depression. I'm sure that you went through a period of depression with that. You know, I I don't feel like I did. Really? I f- yeah, I feel like I was hurt. Yeah. But I trusted in the Lord so much that I healed quickly because I said I knew that whatever the reason was that he allowed it to be. And I just I just had peace. I had so much peace about it. I hated it. I hated it, and I was so sad. I was sad, but I was not depressed. Yeah. And um, you know, Jimmy was solid and strong, and I don't. I don't think he allowed himself to show any of his grieving until he knew that I was okay. You know, after two or three weeks or months or whatever it took, and you know, and I and I would get up on stage, and we would sing, "I love you more." And I was able to share my testimony. And sometimes Ben would share his testimony and, and sing another song that we wrote for him to sing. Um, uh, this place that I'm in seems so unfair. Mm. Um, if that's what it takes, is the song that we wrote for him to sing about his loved one going through alcoholism. Yeah. Um, and so the, uh, the songs began to minister to people. And I just felt grateful that God allowed me to to share that because I would have so many moms and dads come up to me after sharing my story and and they would say to me, we lost a child, Mm -hmm. we've lost one, we've never talked about it or, you know, and thank you for sharing that and the perspective and, you know, so I know God has used it and you can't, you cannot relate to somebody until you've been through it. That's right. And so, although I would never ask for it and I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, I'm I truly am grateful that God um, has used it as a ministry. That is great. I know that uh, you've had tremendous success. Uh, You've been on a lot of the Gaither videos. Uh, I've watched you through the years. And all of those great songs that we heard through the 90s, the early 2000s, everything was great. But the most powerful time that I ever saw the Isaacs ministry was after that. After those testimonies, after God took your whole family almost through probably some of the hardest times in your entire life, Mm -hmm. it seems like the power to minister was greater than I've ever seen in my life. I know it had an impact on me. You know, me and my wife, we lost a child too. And I remember listening to that, and it took me back to that day of remembering exactly when I found out that we had lost that baby, mm-hmm. where I was at. and But then looking and watching you, how that God continued, he's taken that beautiful, radiant smile of that <laughs> girl that I remember back in 1992, mm-hmm. and it's still right there today. Mm-hmm. And you've got people that, you know, they go through things, and it seems like they never get past it. They never get past it. But when I look at you, I still see that love of God and that radiant smile that's always on your face. Thank you. Yeah. So 
I want to tell you this. I want to say thank you for coming here and sharing this with us. I know that you've helped a lot of people watching the program tonight. You've helped me. Even though I've heard a lot of these things, there were things you pointed out today that was just wonderful. And so, do you mind if I pray with you before Please we close? Please do. And before you do, I want to say, for those that don't know my story, six months after I lost Ava, Jimmy and I found out we were expecting again. And That's uh, right. I thought for sure I was going to get my girl, yeah. right? And uh, we did the gender reveal, got a cake. It was blue. And I had me a good cry because I said, Lord, <laughs> at... At my age, um, and I was already 41, I said, at my age, um, I know that we can't really do this a third time. Like, the risks are high. I don't know. I didn't know why I lost Ava. I was scared to death during my pregnancy with Gatlin. And actually, in, in, at four months into my pregnancy, I started hemorrhaging again. We were in North Carolina. And I went to the emergency room and... Um, Fortunately, it was just a, a small tear in my lining of my uterus, and, and Gatlin was fine, thank God. And he's five years old now. And, and wide open, And right? he, he's <laughs> so special. He's like, he's my tenderhearted, he, I don't know, I think he's really called. And not that the others aren't, but he's just as special. I know he had to be here because God gave me another son, and I really wanted a daughter. So, <laughs> And then, um, you know, I would still get on stage and testify of God's goodness because I, you know, even through that scare... Um, and I wrote a song called Peace and Trusting that's on our yes. newest album because yes. of that scare with Gatlin. Um, and then, you know, when Gatlin was six months old, this is God, y'all. We found out we were unexpectedly expecting again and we were not trying. And it was my daughter. So now <laughs> Evia is, uh, she's four, almost four. And uh, so God gave me my, my little girl and two sons. And I'm 46 and I have a house full. And I never dreamed in a million years that this would all happen. But I have to say that um, God gives favor for faithfulness. And no matter what you're going through, you stay true to God and stay faithful to him. And he will bless you. And he'll keep you in the process. That's good. That is just great. Let's pray. Please. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for being so good to us. Lord, I thank you for, for Sonia, for her family, and Lord, for her sharing her stories here. Lord, I know that you're going to use this to touch so many people, to help encourage, give them strength. And I pray, God, that you would continue to have your hand and your power and your anointing and your favor upon the Isaacs, upon Sonia, her family. And God, you continue to use them for many, many years to come. We love you. We thank you. We believe these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed Behind the Mask tonight with uh, Sonia Isaacs, our special guest. We'll be back again to see you really soon.